Good afternoon to you. Mark's out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for the 15th of June, 2017. Happy Thursday afternoon to you. Let's talk about uh, a lot on the agenda today. So I want to show you the updated sea surface temperature anomalies. Just came out a little while ago, updated now, the 15th, from the NOAA NESDA site. And uh, not only am I going to show you this one that shows the Western Hemisphere, uh, but I'm going to show you a comparison that's uh, really... I think eye-opening. So first of all, what do we have? Well, the continuation of the cooling here in the eastern Pacific, the Nino 1-2 area and extending into the 3, and even a few areas, uh, just tiny little blue areas right there, uh, showing up in the Nino 3.4 area. Bottom line, El Nino nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, the main development region out here, and then the waters off the coast of northwest Africa, and the Iberian Peninsula running well above normal, and we have the cold Atlantic in the North Atlantic, which is obviously north or over or on top of, if you're looking at it a map, looking at it a map, looking at it on a map, and you think of the north part of the map as top, uh, you know, this is over this, if you look at it from that perspective. And that cold water profile north of the warmer water where it's concentrated like that typically leads to a pretty big hurricane season in the Atlantic. Notice as well, the very cold water temperatures relative to average, especially right out here. It's no wonder we haven't had any hurricanes in the eastern Pacific. Conditions just aren't favorable there, as we have seen in the last few years at least. And I think the Atlantic's going to take over. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong, but boy, the signs are certainly there. It's very much like, even though the two have no relationship to each other, it's still a good analogy. You have somebody looking at a, a big game in sports, whether it be hockey, baseball, basketball, football, doesn't matter, and you say, hey, this team here has what it takes. They're probably going to win today. The keys to the game, et cetera, all favor that particular team, and usually that ends up being the case. That team will be dominant. Um, and so that's what this looks like from a sports perspective. This definitely has the bases almost loaded for a very busy hurricane season ahead in the Atlantic. So I want to show you the global shot here, and this is pretty remarkable. I'm going to point out a couple of things, and then I'm going to get you uh, sort of have my gotcha moment here. So this is, uh, again, today, June 15th, and you can really get the perspective here, a very large area of colder anomalies in the North Atlantic over the very warm anomalies here in the tropics, and then it extends up, almost completing that horseshoe shape overall. And that is very important. Why? Because this is what it looked like in 2005. More defined, absolutely, but we're not far from it. We certainly had a lot more warmth up here in the North Atlantic. But look at this, how similar this is to this year. All right, you see that large cold pool there? And look at what's happening off Mexico back in 2005. And even this area was warmer than it is this year. Um, and this is cooler. That would seem to be even more of an enhancing factor for the Atlantic Basin. So let's go back to today and just get your bearings there in 2005. What a remarkable similarity, you know, overall. And, hey, who knows, right? I mean, I, it, probably a once-in-a-lifetime thing to see a season like 05, and not everything matches up. I and mean, we can look at the Gulf of Alaska uh, in 2017, and this area, and I don't know what bearing it has. Maybe with the steering patterns and how the troughs and ridges set up, we'll see. But this year, the Gulf of Alaska definitely colder than it was in 2005. But i got to tell you, this area over here, this sort of crescent shape, uh, horseshoe shape configuration, very, very notable and strong in 05, certainly, and we had a mega, mega season that year. But look again, it's really not that much different overall, especially with the configuration of the cold and somewhat of this crescent shape with the majority of the heat down here, the cold eastern Pacific overall. Hey, we'll see, right? Uh, I guess come November 30th, we'll see if it mattered. So let's move on into what's happening. We've set up sort of the stage, if you will, now let's look at the players for tonight's performance. Uh, that's my metaphor. Uh, orange and 50% uh, development area right here. Uh, and, you know, yesterday I wasn't too concerned that this would develop. 
I'm still not concerned in terms of major impact, but I'm a little bit more convinced today that something might develop. It's still only a 50-50 shot. That still means a uh, 50% chance that it won't develop. And then we have our system out here coming out of the deep tropics that may try to uh, become a little bit more invigorated as it heads towards the islands. So here we are mid-June, and we still uh, we have a, you know, a lot going on already. So let's look at the satellite animation, and there you can see it. We're starting to see the beginnings of the look to this area, the vorticity and the energy converging in this area, the, the spin in the atmosphere, the lower atmosphere. Remember, the air has to come together at the surface in a counterclockwise fashion. That's because of the Earth's rotation, the Coriolis force. And then the air must be able to get up and out and not blown across, you know, like this, for example. Uh, and you can see right here, like this cloud streak is a great example of strong upper level winds. And if you have a system coming underneath that, it's just going to get sheared off. So we have the low level convergence starting in here, a little bit of counterclockwise turning. You can just, just beginning to see how things are starting to try to converge right in here. And it's, you know, probably going to try to take off, but quite slowly. Then, look out here. You can also see rotation, a little bit of low cloud turning out here with this system. Uh, this is June, and we're already looking at tropical waves coming off of Africa. And wait till I show you this other satellite picture in just a moment. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico, this is where the system would be headed. Uh, the Hurricane Center indicating, you know, that orange area extending up around like this. And so the Gulf, definitely warm enough water temperatures anywhere from right at 80 degrees or so along the northern Gulf Coast to the low to mid and even upper 80s in the Bay of Campeche. Where will this system end up if it develops? Well, it's a little too soon to say, but you know, we can speculate a little bit, and I'll show you my thoughts on that in just a minute. First of all, upper-level winds right now still in the red over this area, so it's not favorable just yet. And that's why we're not seeing this show up yet on the two-day outlook. The upper-level wind barbs, these are the different layers. You have 100 to 250 millibars in the atmosphere. These are just different heights, and that's what these different wind barbs show us. And this just gives us a different look that the winds are coming out across the system. And what we need to look for is the winds just kind of fan out in a clockwise fashion with anticyclonic flow in these upper levels up here not sort of directional flow across the system. Very, very important if you want to have development. And you know, some people don't, obviously, but you know, nature does. This is how it tries to redistribute heat out of the tropics uh, from the buildup of that in the oceans. And so for that to happen, these upper-level winds as they stand now are not favorable. And here we go, just the beginnings now, the very beginnings of what will be a very large area of vorticity that will take shape over here. And it may take it a while, and it probably isn't going to look like that round, uh, I hate to say pretty, because we don't want to marginalize you know, the effect that these things have on people. But you know, when you look at nature, you can appreciate how something looks. And if it's more round in nature, and, and tropical cyclones can have a fierce beauty about them, and I think this one's going to be more along the ugly side, and I'll be able to show you that in this vorticity chart over the next few days. Speaking of vorticity, there you go. That one's coming along pretty good. And if for June 15th, wow. I mean, two months from now, three months from now, what will we be talking about? So moving along, there it is. This is the system out in the Atlantic uh, right there that has the stronger vorticity signature. And look, another one coming off. Every one of these is going to move their way to the west. We don't have suffocating Saharan air to the north and colder than normal sea surface temperatures with higher pressures to the south. It's not 2013, and these systems will need to be watched if they don't develop between the Lesser Antilles and Africa. You have to watch them in the western part of the basin. And look, there's even more energy starting to line up over Africa itself. It's just amazing. Here we go. Okay, we talked about this as being a possibility. It hasn't happened yet, but we're getting closer and closer to seeing it come to fruition. And I've mentioned the Madden-Julian Oscillation. We talk about it being in phases one and two. And this is the GFS and its ensembles. Uh, clearly, in phase one, 
be kind of stuck here for the next two weeks. So maybe the next two weeks will be somewhat favorable. But, of course, the European never going to agree. <laughs> it's so aggravating. Uh, it says, hey, I'm in phase one now, but I'm going to go over here to phase two and then kind of mill around in a low amplitude MJO state uh, near the Indian Ocean. And, you know, <laughs> just whatever. It, this is, let's put it this way. If the Madden-Julian Oscillation was over here, milling around in this area, we wouldn't have any development chances to speak of on our side of the world, where most of us watch, right? So it's in the wheelhouse. It's where we would expect development to take place, and we're starting to see the signs of that now. So I talked about where this system might end up. Instead of going through the GFS and the Euro or what might happen, let's simplify this, okay? Let's make it easy to kind of understand. Let's assume for the sake of argument that this does develop and we have a tropical storm located somewhere in here uh, in a few days. Where will it go? Will it track you know, towards the Northeast Gulf? Uh, and most of them tend to overall this time of year. Or will it head towards Texas or maybe even to Mexico? These are the three most likely options if something were to be featured in this area, if it pops up. What would control that? Well, we've got this pretty strong Bermuda High, and this is just a generalization. And then we've got this really, really potent high pressure area out over the southwest. Uh, temperatures in Phoenix going to be, you know, near 120. That's a big, thick heat ridge, big dome of high pressure. And so the question is, will there be this alleyway that I've kind of drawn in here? And this is, again, just a generalization of what to look for that would allow this to make its way up somewhere along the northern Gulf Coast? Or does the ridge out over the west expand some, kind of trap this system underneath and send it into Mexico? Do the two ridges of high pressure kind of link up, even if there's sort of a, let me redraw that, maybe something like you get a nice strong ridge here, it's a little thinner, but then thicker out west, and so it comes up and then it turns. I mean, it's hard to say this early because we don't even have a, a defined system. But one thing I would look for, uh, and it's too bad this map doesn't go. Let's see if one of my other ones. No, I don't think I have anything that shows that far. Let's go. I want to try to find this. Let me show you. So what I'm going to look for out west. Come on, western United States. I know you're in here. North Atlantic, northeast Pacific. There it is. All right. So to help my example. When we get that heat ridge building, uh, and you see how clear it is, whoops, come on, give me my color bar. There we go. Out here, uh, Phoenix down here, toasty. Well, maybe not that far south. Vegas, southeast California, yuck. So this big heat ridge, if it expands enough, that system will be coming out and probably get turned into Mexico. That's what we need to look for. The hotter it is over the southwest, but not always, right? then I typically think these will move sort of underneath that ridge and towards Mexico. That's my hunch right now. Northern Mexico, maybe South Texas. So that's what we need to look for. These are, remember I talked about the keys to the game. So those are some of the things that we can watch over the next few days, and you can bet that I'll be doing that. Hey, you want to see uh, an interview with me live? Uh, it's coming up tonight on YouTube live Stormfront Freaks, episode number 29. I'm going to be the guest tonight. You can see the countdown there live in seven hours right there. Uh, I will tweet it. And, I mean, you just look for Stormfront Freaks, episode 29 on YouTube, and it'll pop right up for you. But I'll also put it on Facebook and in Twitter. Uh, it's going to be about an hour-long interview. Uh, it's a fun show. It's a fun that the guys and gals that run it, the producers behind it, are great and it'll be a lot of fun if you like weather brains you're gonna love this they're all similar and it's awesome what the internet can allow us to do not only with tracking storms but also this interaction between all of us and so I'll, I'll be talking about the 22 years of hurricane tracking and some chasing you usually don't chase a hurricane that name hurricane chaser it doesn't exactly apply to me we get there before they come and they kinda of chase us I guess but that's all just semantics, I suppose. But yeah, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, and if you can't watch live, it'll be archived, uh, the raw video back on YouTube, and then it's available as a podcast as well, and they get quite a good reception, so check that out. 
All right, well, that's it for me for this afternoon and today. I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Got a lot to focus on over the next few days and weeks, maybe. Uh, I'll talk to you again tomorrow.